Hi everyone. In this talk, I will introduce you our recent work about using acoustic sensing method to support upper facial action recognition for smart eyewear. Let me first discuss the motivation of our design. Smart eyewear, such as AR glasses, is considered to be the next big breakthrough for wearable technologies because it can put information right in front of our eyes, and this can create an, an immersive human-computer interaction experience. However, the interaction scheme of state-of-the-art smart eyewear is mostly rely on touchpad. Unlike smartphones and smartwatches where touch-based interaction only requires finger tapping, to interact with a glass-mounted touchpad, a user needs to raise his or her arm to reach to the touchpad. Thus, frequently interacting with smart eyewear may cause fatigue, and it is not friendly to the elderly and the disabled community. Although most smart eyewear is equipped with a voice assistant, there are situations when these voice commands are restricted, such as during a meeting or in a library. Therefore, a new hands-free and quiet interaction system for smart eyewear is desirable. So the question is, can we design such a system for smart eyewear? If the answer is yes, then what is the interaction vocabulary and what is the input media? Recent works have shown the possibility of using upper facial action, or UFA, as a hands-free input modality. And we believe such method is preferable for eye smart eyewear because eyewear is, by nature, close to our face. Thus, it, it is easy for an eye eyeglass to sense UFAs. As for the sensing modality, we believe the, the acoustic signal is, among others, more suitable for this job because it is accurate, contactless, and most importantly, cost efficient. Therefore, our solution is to use acoustic sensing method to sense the following five UFAs, cheek raise, brow raise, brow lower, wink, and blink. This is our prototype. We customized the seed four mic linear array to a circular array to fit into an eyeglass frame. The four mic array together with a pair of earphones, which serves as a speakers, are connected to the seed voice accessory board, and the entire system is powered by a Raspberry Pi. The main idea of our solution of our software solution is to use channel state information or CSI as a tool to sense the skin deformation patterns caused by the UFAs, and we use deep learning techniques for classification. The software system consists of three main components, OFDM-based CSI estimation, CSI signal processing, and UFA recognition. In the rest of this talk, I will briefly introduce the three components. For the system details, please refer to our paper. In the OFDM-based CSI estimation module, we let the speakers transmit an inaudible OFDM signal, and we extract CSI from the received signal by computing the channel frequency response. An example of the CSI signal of an individual performing a bro raise is shown here. Note that our OFDM scheme has 16 operational channels, and the signals are plotted as time sequences in the IQ domain. After extracting the 16 channel CSI signals, we use the PCA algorithm to fuse the 16 channels into one single channel. Next, we conduct feature engineering to extract features from the CSI signal. We use a short time Fourier transform to extract the time frequency domain features. As shown here, different UFAs have different time frequency features. And these features show a certain, a certain level of consistency across subjects. Except for the time frequency domain, since our eyewear has four mics and two speakers, which sum up to eight links, different UFAs show distinct characteristics in the link domain as well. For example, a cheek raise shows a high energy at the last two links, while a bro, bro raise shows high energy in the first two links. Finally, after the eight link features are ready, we use a three-layer CNN for high-level representation extraction and classification. Note that we use three techniques to prevent the model from overfitting. Among these three, the confidence control constraint punishes the model when the model gives an overlarge confidence to a uh, training sample. 
it is worth noting that although the features show some level of consistency across subjects, the human factors still cannot be neglected considering the limited size of the training data. Therefore, we use transfer learning to personalize the model to new users. Specifically, in the personalization process, we freeze the model except for the last layer, and we retrain the last layer with only a few samples of each UFA from the new user. We collect data from 26 subjects, and our leaf one subject our validation shows that our eyewear can achieve a satisfactory accuracy among the target facial actions and across different subjects. Thank you for your listening, and now I'm willing to take any questions.